Hello boys and girls. Welcome to second grade math today. I am Miss Bloomer and I teach second grade math at Lexington and I have brought a good friend with me who's going to help me today. And I'm Miss Craig and I also teach at Lexington. Today the skill we're going to be focusing on is telling time. We're going to do two different things. We're going to tell time with five minute intervals but we're also going to differentiate between a.m. and p.m. These are two different time skills that we're going to do. Uh, time is our skill today. Now, you need a tool to measure the passage of time. And the tool that you use for measuring how much time is passed is a clock. Now, clocks come in lots of different ways. There's two main clocks. One is called an analog clock and one is called a digital clock. Now on this side, you have some pictures of some analog clocks. Now analog clocks can come big like you put on the wall, and you notice they have numbers on them, we're gonna look at those numbers in just a minute, or it could be taller than your mom and dad called a grandfather clock, or it can be tiny, the analog clock can be so tiny it'll fit on your wrist, it's called a watch, or sometimes they're turned into pieces of artwork like this wooden carved cuckoo clock or this cut glass peacock analog clock. Now these are all analog clocks. They're round and they have numbers going around them. Miss Craig is going to show you a second type of clock. So these types of clocks are clocks you're probably more familiar with because one of them, this, is a stove clock. You walk by a digital clock every time you go in your kitchen and look at your stove because it says the time on it. Now a digital clock just shows you which hour you're in first and then it has the minutes that we have but we'll go into that later. So you can have digital clocks in your kitchen like on your stove. You can have digital clocks that wake you up that you can see easily in the middle of the night. This could be an alarm clock that is a digital clock. The digital clock is what you look at when you click your phone and you look to see what time it is and also, just like with our analog clock, they make digital clocks so tiny that they can even fit on your wrist, just like you see here. Okay, now on, let's talk about an analog clock first. Let's focus on that because that's probably the one you're not the most familiar with. Now on the clock, this part of the clock is called its face, the face of the clock. There is another body part to the clock, and we say that a clock has hands, just like you have two hands. An analog clock has two hands. One is very, 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 very long, and one is short. It does not reach the number. The long hand goes all the way to the number, the short hand does not. The short hand, we're going to call that the hour hand, and the long hand, we're going to call that the minute hand. All right, so when you're writing um, from looking at your analog clock, you have to write it in a digital form sometimes. And so this is what it would look like digitally is how we'd say that. So first you have to put your hour. So it's 11, your hour is 11, and then this little two dot piece you see here is called a colon. You put your 11, your colon, and your colon is what separates it from your minutes. So after your hour and your colon, you write what minute you're in after you look at your analog clock. So let's practice that. Let's see if you can apply that skill of how to tell time on an analog clock. Step one, the very first thing you do every time you see an analog clock is you find that hour hand. In other words, you find the short hand. Hmm. On this picture, we've shaded it in in red to make it easier for you to see. Look at this hour hand. Hmm. Where does it fall? It's not touching the one or the two. That's going to be a problem. Hmm. So, there's a trick for helping you know what that hour is. If you will put your eyes or your finger on the 12 and you'll slide until you get to that hour hand, Look and see what was the last number you touched. It's the smaller of the two numbers. So since it's halfway between the one and the two, Miss Craig, what was the last number I touched? It would be one because you're not to the two yet. Now the only thing you've got to, I need to clarify on that is uh, this last sentence here. 
So let's say the hour hand is halfway between the 12 and the 1. Well, my lower number rule won't work for that. But my rule that I showed you for put your finger on the 12 you and go. slide until you get there, Oops. then that will work. Because the last number I touched was the 12. So if the hour hand is halfway between 12 and 1, you would use 12 as your hour. So that's a special rule. So now we're going to talk about how we write that digitally. So we just went over, look, our hour hand, the short hand, falls between our 1 and 2. What did Ms. Bloomer say? We have to go back to the smaller number. So we write the hour hand in front of the colon. The hour hand goes first. All right, so now we have the hour hand done. We discovered it was one o'clock. Let's look at our minute hand. It is almost at the, or it is, it is at the six. So we have to tell the minutes and they're represented by these teeny tiny lines. So each line is very small. You start at the 12 every time. I know that's funny, but you do. And this would be one, two, Three, four. I'm at the one now. What number would that be, Miss Blamer? Oh, she stopped on five. So it took five hops to, to get, get to, to the one. one. So an easier way than counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What would an easier way be, Miss Blamer? Ah, every time she took five hops, it was at a number. So every time I hop to a number, I could count by fives. I can skip count. So let's see what minute, what number we'd be on by doing that. So we're at the 12, that's where we start. Hop to one, so that's five, five 10, 15, 15 20, 20, 25, 30. So our time is one, and after my colon, I put my minutes, 30. Okay, now, there are 60 minutes in one hour. That's something that you need to, that's another fact that you need to learn. It takes 60 minutes to go all the way around. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. 60 minutes put me going all the way around to one hour. And we know that when we land on the six, we just discovered it was 1.30 for our minutes, right? So when it's on the six, you're halfway around the clock. So an easy way to remember that is a little poem. Halfway through our land, six is where you'll find the minute hand. Okay, so this is a, another example of what Ms. Crack just showed you on how to compare an analog clock to a digital clock. This clock is telling, is measuring time of 1.30. And this clock is also showing you that the time is 1.30. Put in your 30 after the colon. Now, half hour. We knew that 60 minutes make one hour. So I think in my head, what if I cut that number in half? Half of 60 is 30. All the way around the clock was 60 minutes. Halfway around the clock, the part shaded in yellow is only 30 minutes. We call that a half hour. When the minute hand goes halfway around the clock, that means that 30 minutes have gone past that hour. 30 minutes have passed in time. All right, so we're first looking at the hour hand, and if you notice here, it's between the four and the five. So we always go back to the number it was at first. It was at the four. It showed us that. So the hour hand's pointing between the four and the five. So we write the four first and it did that for us. All right, so next we have to look at the minute hand and we see that it's at the six. Well, what Ms. Bloomer just said, six means the 30 because there's 60 minutes an hour. It's halfway around the clock. This is showing you some different ways to say it. So here is our clock, that's an analog clock, and here is our digital clock. So you could say it's 4.30, just like the digital clock writes it, or since it's halfway around, you could say half past four. Now it's time
time for you to practice one. We want you to look at this clock and we want you to see if you can figure out what time this clock says. Remember to look at your hour hand first. Got it? Okay, now find your minute hand. Start the 12. Count by fives. Got it? Okay, if you said 10.30, then two thumbs up. High Good five. job. You did a great job. Because remember to find your hour hand first. Okay. We can also divide a clock into sections. We already did. We already divided it in half. We showed you yellow half. Mm -hmm. There's another way you can divide it. You can divide it into four pieces, into fourths, into four equal parts. And if you divide it into fourths, it would look like this. You would have a vertical line and a horizontal line, four equal parts. We refer to these pieces as quarters. We refer to it as quarters of the hour. And an easy way to think of that is, remember four quarters equals one whole dollar. Four quarters of the clock equals one whole clock. But each quarter that you see on the clock represents 15 minutes. Because remember, we started the 12 and our 1, when we skip count and hop to the 1s, it's about 5s. So 5, 10, 15. Each quarter of the clock is 15 minutes. Okay, so let's talk about if the minute hand has moved one quarter. It has moved 15 minutes, 5, 10, 15. The minute hand is now pointing to the 3. It is pointing to the 3. When the minute hand is pointing at the 3, we call that quarter after the hour because one quarter of time has passed after the hour. So remember that. When the minute hand is pointing to the 3, we can also refer to that as quarter after. So a little rhyme is, when the minute hand is on the three, a quarter past, it will be. All right, so as always, we look at our hour hand first. Well, this time, since we're only a quarter after, it's not totally between the six and the seven, it's closer to the six, but Miss Bloomer's rule still applies. Whatever hour you pass first goes first. So we write our six first, and then let's see what time it is when it's on the three. Remember, we started at the zero, zero of the 12 o'clock, which is zero. And then we're hopping to five, 10, 15. So another way to say that is a quarter past six or simply six, 15. Very good. So this would be how it would look on an analog clock, 6.15. And this is how it would look on a digital clock, 6.15. Analog clock, digital, and another way that you could say it, if, you're, if someone says to you, what time is it, and you look at your watch and it has this, you can answer them by saying a quarter after six, because a quarter of the hour has passed. And these are just, same thing, different ways you can say it. Now, now it's, it's time your turn. For you. It's your turn. Okay, so now it's your turn, boys and girls, to check yourself. Remember, your hour hand's the long one. Where is it pointing? How can we say that? But first, don't forget what we look at first. Look at your short hand, your hour hand. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, if you write 12.15, thumbs up. Good job. You got it right. You could have also said a quarter past. 12. Okay, so let's what happens to see when the quarter is on another portion of our fours, another portion of the clock. Our quarter is on this side now. This is one quarter of the clock between the 9 and the 12. But if you notice, as you move around the clock, you're getting really close to the next hour. Mm -hmm. So we don't call it quarter after, we call it quarter to. It's a quarter to the next hour. When the minute hand is pointing at the nine, 
that means it's a quarter to the next hour. All right, so again, first we look at our hour hand and it is between the four and the five, but it's almost touching the five, boys and girls. Be super careful of that. Almost touching the five, but not quite yet. It's still four. And then we have our minute hand pointing at the nine. So, don't forget, we can count by fives to get there. So, start at our 12, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So, we can write this by 4, 45. Or, a different way to say it is a quarter to 5 because it's closer to the next hour, which would be 5. And these are just different ways to write it. We have a little poem. So the little poem you can do. Mm -hmm. it, okay. Well, since we're closer to the next hour, Miss Blamer, don't stop now. You're almost there. The minute hand will reach the nine. It's a quarter till it's time to shine. It's a little poem to help you remember how to tell these. Now here's one for you to practice. Okay, find your short hand first. Hour. Got your hour. Don't let it trick you. Okay, here's your minute hand. Start at the top. Count by fives. You have it. You ready? Let's see how well you did. If you said 645, then you are an awesome time-telling machine. Now we're going to switch and we're going to talk about the other numbers that aren't quarter hours. So there are other numbers. We did the three, the six, the nine, but there's other numbers on this clock too. There's a one, two, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Let's talk about what happens when the minute hand lands on the other numbers that aren't half past or quarter past or quarter till. Still, we go back to step one, and our step one is to find your hour hand. My hour hand is pointing to the eight. First, look at the hour hand. It's pointing to the eight, so I'll write my eight first. All right, so then next we look at our minute hand. Well, remember we start at 12 and we hop and count by fives. The minute hand's on the one, so what time would this be? Do I just write eight five? Oh, sounds good to me, Miss Craig. But you can't do oh, that, boys and girls, because goodness. in a clock for the minutes, you always have to have two numbers. So the way we would write it and the way you would say it, let's look and see what it would be. 8.05 is how we say it. When the minute hand's pointing to the one, that means five minutes is past the hour and you write it 8.05, not just eight, colon five. So other ways that you can say that, analog clock would look like this, 8.05. Digital would look like this, 8.05. Or you could say to someone, it's five minutes past eight. These are various ways that you can say the same time. Now, this is just showing you that you how to count when you go all the way around counting your minute hand by fives. Count with us. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. Now stop here. 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Think back to what Miss Craig and I told you. 60 minutes makes one hour. So now you're at the next hour. So your minutes are zero, zero o'clock. Now let's let you have a practice one. All right, check yourself, boys and girls. Find your minute hand first, don't forget. Our hand first. I am so sorry. If you said 435, if that's what you wrote down, thumbs up to you. Good job, boys and girls. Okay, now, one other last thing we're going to do to add to our time is you can't just tell your time in numbers and numerals. You can't just say 435. Because guess what, boys and girls? There are two 435s in a day. Miss Craig, did you know that there's two of them? Oh my goodness. So if you say 435, I don't know which one you're referring to. So there's a, um, a, 
an abbreviation, you need to add to the end. There's, a, there's another way of differentiating between 435, and it's AM and PM. There are 24 hours in one day. Half of that time, 12 hours, we refer to as AM. Half of that time, 12 hours, we refer to as PM. So there is a 435 AM and there's a 435 PM. Let's look at that a little bit more closely. So AM is actually an abbreviation and it stands for Latin Antimeridium. That's what it stands for. And this is the time you're thinking of that's daytime hours. That's before midday. So think about this as being your entire day. This is your 24 Oops. hours. This is your 24 yes. hours. Now, when you get to um, 12 hours of it is day, 12 hours of it is night. So let's look at just the AM part. Let's look at just the daytime time. This is our 12 hours of day. Hmm. But my AM time starts at 12 midnight, the middle of the night, and click, 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 time's going by, time's going by. AM ends when we get to 12 noon, the middle of our daytime. All the times that fall between 12 midnight and 12 noon, we're going to refer to as AM times. All right, and then for your nighttime hours you have for your 12 hours, we call those your PM hours, which stands for post-meridian, and that's after your midday. So, here are your nighttime hours, and then when it's the middle of the night, you're right between your 12 hours of nighttime, your 12 hours of darkness, kind of. So, our PM times start at 12 noon, and they go around the clock and stop when we get to 12 noon. So let's practice that. We're going to do a couple of quick practice ones. Look at this picture. I'm going to tell you the time is 9 o'clock on the analog clock and the digital clock. But you have to decide, is it 9 o'clock a.m. or 9 o'clock p.m.? Use your picture clothes. Oh, Miss Craig, what do you notice about that sky? It looks pretty dark to me. Yeah, and the lights are showing. So I'm thinking this is at night. And so, Ms. Craig, if it's at night, would I pick a.m. or p.m.? Mm, you pick p.m. because that means it's the nighttime hours. That's Very good, boys and girls. So we're going to pick p.m. for this one. We're going to say that this is 9 o'clock p.m. Let's do another practice one, Ms. Craig. Oh, my goodness, Ms. Bloomer, my favorite meal. Oh, I see pancakes, eggs, bacon, Ugh, and the time is 7 o'clock. So, Ms. Bloomer, would we be eating a meal such as pancakes, eggs, and bacon at 7 o'clock a.m. or 7 o'clock p.m.? Hmm, Miss Craig, I know that those are breakfast foods and I eat those early in the morning when I first get up. So I bet that's morning. I'm going to say a.m. And a.m. is right because a.m. is our morning hours, our daytime hours. Good job, Miss Bloomer. One last practice. <gasps> this is Miss Bloomer's favorite thing to do is to go to the beach. This is my favorite place to be is at the beach. And so it is two o'clock and we're going to pretend like we are all sitting mm -hmm. together on the beach. So I'm thinking daytime hours, a.m. or p.m. Now this is in the afternoon. It's this is the more challenging one because it's after 12 noon, remember? but it's still our daytime hour. So I'm gonna have to go with p.m. Yes, ma'am, even though it's daytime, this one is two o'clock p.m. because the time falls in our 12 hours that fall between noon and midnight. Good job, boys and girls. Okay, now to close out, um, I'm gonna offer you a little challenge that I'd like for you to do at home. I have two different challenges. One has to do with time so make yourself a chart of the things that you do throughout the day. Keep you a little notepad and write down the things that you do. Wake up, eat breakfast, work on my distance learning at home, mm -hmm. um, eat lunch, play outside, watch TV, eat supper, go to bed. Make a list of your daily schedule, but next to it, I want you to write what time you started that task or that event. 
keep up with the times of everything you do in a day. Another challenge I'm offering you is AM PM challenge. Are you ready? Oh my goodness. This will include a little art in your activity. Draw and color a picture of one thing that you could do during the AM hours. Draw and color a picture of something you could do during the PM hours. And then display your art, share it with your family. Maybe get your families to participate in this. Boys and girls, you have done a super great job today telling time on a clock, and this is a very important skill because when you grow up and you're gonna have events and things that you need to attend, and if you don't know how to, what time, how to read a clock, you're gonna be late for your events and your things. So I hope that you will go and practice telling a time, maybe get a little watch to help you. And Ms. Craig and I sure have enjoyed spending our time with you today, and we did, are very impressed with how well you did. Yes, ma'am. Well, that's all for today, boys and girls. I hope you learned a lot about time, and I hope that you practice it and take Ms. Bloomer's challenge up. It would be a lot of fun.